Hello, my friends. Welcome to the show. East West Jeff Chow、uh, is the host for the GNE TV.、Uh, paying a lot of attention to the summer heat. We call it. Somebody call it this Indian summer. Well, anyway, to the fact, judging by the numbers of the dometer, you're talking about. <laughs> I mean. Uh, let me re- let me、uh, start it all, all over again.、Okay. I、uh, I shouldn't have、uh, mentioned the Indian summer because it sounds like、uh, discriminative. Forget <laughs> that part. <laughs> okay. Oh,、uh, these days you have to be very very careful. Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to East West. Jack Chow is your host.、Uh, I'm with the Gene TV. Uh, talking about the summer heat, though, there's a lots of concerns about people drinking lots of water, especially to people who has a diabetic condition or anything. So,、uh, I mean, should the body, human body, handle that kind of、uh, increase, sudden increase of fluid? So, in in order to find the answers to the question, I have my good friend. And、uh, Dr. Hartless、yes. at Western University、yes. to join us to share about his professional point of views. You welcome to the show. Thanks, Jack. Good to be here. Good to see you. All right. I know you are a specialist in diabetic prevention,、mm-hmm. and you are specialized also in the field of food food health. Food health, podiatry. Yes, sir.、Uh, pediatric.、Uh, uh, podi- podiatric. 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 Podiatric.、Yes. Uh, there are lots of medical terms to learn. So, my first question is my、uh, my first concern, though,、uh, of the reason sudden heat、uh, going all, well way over one hundred people drink lots of water, such as my case in myself, right?、Mm-hmm. So, could a human body handle such an increase?、Uh, yes,、um, basically, the body is primarily water. Probably eighty percent of the body is really water,、mm-hmm. right? So、um, uh, normally we should probably drink about eight、uh, glasses of water a day, but most most of us do not drink、uh, e- enough water because、uh-huh. that's kind of what really keeps the the system filtered out. All right. However, when、uh, they when there's excess heat,、uh, you need、uh, more water,、mm-hmm. right? And so the、mm-hmm. point you made about、uh, drinking more water is good. I don't、uh, see that that's an issue with patients with.、Uh, Diabetes in, in,、mm-hmm. in general, as long as that their, their kidneys are working、uh, appropriately. I see. Now, I one see. of the、uh, all the complications from diabetes、mm-hmm. are related to blood flow, and so the reason for that is、uh, there are certain cells in the body that have an increased predilection、mm-hmm. uh, uh, to develop complications,、mm-hmm. and that's because those particular cells. Do not utilize glucose well inside the cell. I see. And that's the mesangial cell、uh-huh. in the eye,、uh-huh. the glomerul- glomerular、mm. cell in the kidney,、mm. and the Schwann cell yeah, in, my, in the nerve. Yeah, my prim- primary concern is the kidney. Right, right. Because I understand the heat and water balance, right? Yes, the relationship between heat and water.、Mm-hmm. The more the water, the more、uh, the capability of reducing the heat to、mm-hmm. the body, right?、Mm-hmm. The thing is that while you are handling a, a regular amount, like、uh, two glasses a day or three glasses a day, all of a sudden, in my case, I increased to twenty, twenty-five glasses a day. That kind of thing. I am supposed to bring extra burden to my kidney. Am I right? Well, yes, you can. You can, but but unless you have、uh, some early kidney disease, that really, really shouldn't be a problem. And I'm shouldn't saying, be right. No, no, it,、uh-huh. I, I don't really think that that would really, really be a so problem. So my concern is that instead of going to bathroom like three times a day, right? Uh huh. I go ten times because of water. Well, that's exactly so right. So every ten minutes you need to go. <laughs> well, that's but but that that that's a that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a good thing because、uh-huh. it's filtering the system out. If you're drinking more water,、I、then、see. you go to the, to the bathroom more. It's almost like when、oh. you getting ready to have a colonoscopy,、mm. they give you all that water to drink the night before to just clean your system out. So、uh-huh. it actually cl- cleans it, cleans the system out, and it filters everything a lot better. Yeah, and it, it, it was last night. That, it decreased that total sure, body sure, sure, body sure. heat if you're、oh, drinking more water, and you don't get dehydrated as well.、Uh-huh. What happens is that your body dehydrates. When the, when the heat is so hot because of the perspiration. Oh, I see. Yeah, I and see. so because of that, that's why they、mm. say stay out of the heat, put a hat on, don't stay out there too long, especially when you start getting over 100 degrees. It was exactly last night at the party. The one sitting next to me, 
was a diabetic. Uh -huh. And uh, well, I, well, I asked him, well, how come you don't drink a lot of more water? He says, well, I can't because of the extra burden to my kidney. Uh -huh. uh, that's what he said. Yeah. Right. So my concern is that, oh, yeah, extra water means extra capacity of handling to the mm -hmm. kidney, mm -hmm. and, that, and then you're bringing extra burden, whatever. Well, that, that could be a problem if you start to develop some early kidney disease. I but see. there are certain labs that will let you know there's a thing called microalbuminuria, which is one of the earlier... Uh, signs that mm -hmm. albumin is uh, protein in, that you have, mm. and uh, uh, that's one of the earlier changes that you can see some early changes in kidney function. I see. Is a is a test where you check check your uh, uh -huh. microalbuminuria, and that's I related see. to the vascular changes, blood vessel mm -hmm. changes within the kidney that leads to the problem with the glomerular cells I because see. you have the kidneys clear so much urine in a normal cycle, mm -hmm. and so when it starts to become damaged, you can have microalbuminuria, but the other things is that you, your creatinine and your uh, blood urea nitrogen, we call it BUN, those mm -hmm. particular things will increase mm -hmm. when your kidney function starts to diminish. Sure. And so that would pretty much tell you whether he's correct mm -hmm. in saying, well, his kidney may not be able to handle as much water. So all if that's right. the case, then he, may mm -hmm. need, he doesn't need to go outside at all. He needs to stay in under air condition mm -hmm. so he doesn't stress his kidneys as much in terms I of the sim simple thing I to see. do. I but see. I think that's a, a great uh, point to understand mm -hmm. about diabetes and if there's a disease of the kidneys. So that's related to uh, microvascular disease, related to inflammation, at the cellular level related uh, to see. increased blood sugars. Oh, so you're saying that uh, 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 a diabetic might not at the same time have uh, kidney disease. Right. Well, at they some point- They are different disease, right? Right, well, at so, see, there's a, you have a thing called prediabetes. Mm -hmm. So uh, normal blood sugar is less than 100. Mm -hmm. So once the blood sugar gets over 100, mm -hmm. We call that prediabetes because the, the beta cells and the pranc pancreas that, that produces insulin, which counteracts the increase in, in blood sugar, start to work overtime to oh, produce see. more insulin to uh, counteract the increased uh, sugar in the blood. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, all right. So once you get prediabetes, you start to develop inflammation at the, at the cellular level. Mm. But you will not have any kidney disease at that particular point. Mm, but the I disease see. process is a I continuum, see. and that's mm. where most patients get into trouble. Mm. They, they, get, they think that they are fine, uh, but the longer that disease and that inflammation stays there, uh, and, the, and the beta cells have to produce more insulin, that, uh, they'll kind of burn themselves out. And I you don't see. produce enough insulin, and, and at some point, you'll get uh, diabetes. You'll get overweight diabetes because the beta word, cells yeah, are producing it. So that's sure. the counterbalance oh. of the beta cells producing insulin mm -hmm. and you uh, you having hyperglycemia due to mm -hmm. uh, eating the wrong things, not exercising, I see. And then, but that's a balance. Oh. But when the beta cells fail to produce as much insulin as it, as it to counteract the amount of glucose mm -hmm. you have, that's when you develop overweight diabetes. I see. I so see. It's, a, it's where the beta cells are in not other word, functioning as well. In other words, the gentleman sitting next to me was suffering from both disease. Mm -hmm. He probably uh, had, if he diabetes had diabetes. and the kidney disease. He, he probably, if he's saying that, I would say most likely he probably did, if he, if mm -hmm. he had his information correctly. I see, right. I mm -hmm. see. All right. right, if he's had diabetes, so I, so I would say if you have diabetes, mm -hmm. your vascular tour is not normal. The question is, where are you along the risk spectrum of circulation disease. Because every complication, whether it's in the eye, the mm. kidney, or the nerve, mm. is related to blood flow. Right. And so that's why they saying keeping your blood sugar as close to normal as possible mm. will prevent you from progressing to the microvascular complications, which is retinopathy, you develop problems in the eye, mm. you develop uh, neuropathy, where you lose sensation in the feet, uh -huh. And that's the nerve disease, I see. and you develop nephropathy oh, in the kidney. That's but where you kick in. That's exactly. About the food. That's where we kick in in the foot. Now, mm -hmm. when you start talking about the heat and the foot, mm -hmm. I'm more concerned about all, all ulcerations developing or creating a wound on your foot mm -hmm. because of the heat, because mm -hmm. you've lost lost pain. I see. You don't feel so. You you should never go walk outside barefooted, uh -huh. or if you walk outside with a shoe that's been sitting outside and you put it in a a little uh, thong or something, mm -hmm. you could actually burn your foot because you can't feel. You lost the gift of pain. 
I see, I see. Yeah, and so that's so, the detriment. That's what you see in hot weather, especially uh, in this environment. I had a patient once that was coming down from uh, the high desert up around uh, Hesperia mm -hmm. and uh, up in that area uh -huh. to uh, Arrowhead, the county hospital in San Bernardino. Right. And his ride was coming, and he was running late, and so he ran out of the house barefooted up there in that high desert. And he oh. got a, a second, third degree bur burn, a burn on the bottom of his foot uh -huh. from he hit the, the he pavement. He did not even feel. He didn't, it, right, and he came to see me from a problem that I was trying to prevent, and he had already created a new problem. Wow. And it took me about twice as long to get, because that was a, like a burn. Oh, so I that's see. A, a different types of burns. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, chemical, uh, see, thermal, uh, et cetera, all from a fire. That is all because of the uh, nerve. The, the end of the nerve, the nerve failed to detect. That's exactly right. So uh -huh. uh, Paul Brand, who taught us the most about why patients with neuropathy ulcerate, but he learned that from patients with leprosy. Mm -hmm. And he had a famous quote that says, pain is the gift that nobody wants. Pain is the gift that, pain nobody, is the gift that uh, nobody wants. That nobody wants. Yeah, we don't want to have pain, but uh, pain teaches us lessons. So uh, if, I if, I if, if I, I uh, mm -hmm. had a, a little uh, needle yeah, or exactly, something in my shoe, exactly. yeah, a yeah, little yeah. pebble, mm -hmm. he said, well, it's, I feel something uh, unstable. This doesn't feel right. Now, let me sure, see. Sure, so you'll sure, take sure. your shoe out, mm -hmm. you'll shake it out. And all of a sudden, you may have a, a foreign body in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if you've lost the gift of pain, you would not know that. Mm -hmm. And so you start walking, and that's the most common reason for yeah, injury. Yeah, that's why some people say, if you feel pain here, well, that's better rather than numb. Absolutely. Right? That's exactly right. So you don't right. even feel the pain. That right. was even worse. Right. right. That's why patients would, uh, we, it was very, very interesting that Paul Brand was trying to figure out mm -hmm. how do you ed educate a diabetic patient about why they also rate. I said that's a, uh, but especially uh -huh. if they lost the gift of pain. I but see. it's a pressure time curve, meaning that if I take my finger mm -hmm. and hit myself long enough, I can actually break my skin. I but see. but in a healthy patient, mm -hmm. they don't realize they're hurting themselves, so they uh -huh. go out and do normal things like you or I. I see. But I see. with the deformity, or if they have callus or something mm -hmm. there where they have pressure. Mm -hmm then that thing will break the skin all and you'll right, develop an right. open wound. That and, 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 and that happens point. with the heat. Yeah, the sure. heat is so important uh -huh. because you can easily go out there and walk on a surface mm -hmm. that didn't feel hot. All right, all right. Let's take a short moment. Those info, very necessary, very important. Uh, we'll be right back. Hello, dear folks. Welcome back to the discussion about uh, our health. Uh, yeah, anyway, last night I read a piece of information on WeChat to say that, well, you have to make sure you live before you can tell people you're rich or you're extra rich or how rich you are. No matter how rich you are, if life doesn't continue, you don't have the money, you don't have the wealth, right? So. Uh, well, health is the first, uh, first, first the thing that people uh, pay attention to, especially when you reach certain age and really think about it. So it is all about the reason the heat going over extremely high. Lots of people start suffering, and uh, lots of questions needs to be answered. In order to get the answers, I have my good friend. Dr. Hartless to yeah. join me in the show. Once again, welcome. Thanks, Jack. And Dr. Hartless holds a dim position at the Western University, and he himself both does the academic part and also the clinical, clinical part, right? So, yes, sir. Uh, having created lots of experiences uh, with uh, his uh, patients, both mostly diabetic, mm -hmm. So he's here to share about his uh, advices in prevention, right? So before that, though, I recently heard the news that there is the cure that they found already to deal with diabetic can do it once for good. So is that a true or false? Well, that uh, that's not necessarily true from my my perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, you were talking about uh, stem cells as it mm -hmm. relates to yeah, uh, stem to cells, a cure. Yes, uh -huh. uh, 
that, that, that definitely holds a lot of promise, but that hasn't necessarily been proven to be the, you know, the mm. cure for diabetes. Um, with stem cells, um, you can reproduce new beta cells in the pancreas, you know, mm. through, this, through the stem cells is one yeah. of the things that they were thinking about. That's what they that say regard. they can, they found it possible to, 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 to create some uh, beta cells right. to mm -hmm. help your pancreas. Right to produce that to balance the sugar, right? right the right. insulin to balance the sugar. Right, so right. Well, I think, I that think that's new and that was some, some early uh, mm. pioneering work in there, but I don't believe that enough of it has been done to sh say that that's gonna be the, the standard for, you know, mm. for, the, for, for the future. I and there see. are two types of diabetes. There's type one and two. Mm -hmm. Type one is where the beta cells do not produce any insulin at all. Mm -hmm. And so that's when you do that in childhood early adolescence, et cetera, mm -hmm. is type one. Uh, only 10% of patients that have diabetes, over mm -hmm. 26 million plus, mm -hmm. only 10% of those will have type one. The, bu the burden of the disease in terms of chronic disease and illness is type two. And 90% so of patients So type one, type two, which is worse? Well, type one you have for a longer period of time. Uh -huh. Right. We've had two studies dealing with diabetes mm -hmm. Uh, to, to look at if you control your blood sugar as close mm. to normal as possible, mm. can you prevent the microvascular complications? I see. That's the retinopathy, neuropathy, and nephropathy, eye, uh -huh. kidney, nerve disease uh -huh. that we talked about in the first, uh, uh, first segment. Mm -hmm. And that was a um, DCC mm -hmm. T trial. Mm -hmm. I think it was a 1992 article that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Mm -hmm. And it was about 1,500 patients, uh, mm -hmm. uh, type 1. And it basically demonstrated that if you keep low blood sugar as close to normal as possible, you can prevent, uh, I think it was 60% for neuropathy and um, nephropathy and about 64% for retinopathy. Mm. So, so, so that's saying that if you... Please, doctor, use the uh, simple term. Those medical terms I don't understand and my audience either. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, mm. basically what I'm saying is that you can prevent the eye disease, the kidney disease, and the nerve disease that I develops oh. if you keep your blood sugar as close to normal as possible. And that's what that particular study demonstrated. Oh. However, that was strictly in patients with type 1. I see. Not type 2. So mm. the question was from, from the clinicians and the scientists, mm. was that translatable to type 2? Mm. And they said, no, that's a different disease. And so this study was funded by the National Institutes of Health, I see. NIH. I see, I see. Well, they decided that they would embark on another study mm -hmm. to say, if you do the same thing, can you prevent that in type 2? I see. However, what they learned was that there was a study that already had started in the United Kingdom, in, mm -hmm. in England. Mm -hmm. And so instead of reinventing the wheel, they decided to become part of the of that study. And that's called the United Kingdom mm -hmm. Prospective Diabetes Trial in type two, and that was uh, that that was about fifteen thousand patients, from what I remember. Uh -huh. And basically, it demonstrated similar. It wasn't as high a success, but it uh -huh. demonstrated that if you keep your blood can sugar, be controlled. It can be controlled. Can be and controlled. That, right, and there have uh -huh. been many many studies. One is the DPP trial, the mm -hmm. diabetes prevention trial, mm -hmm. in type two. Again, ninety percent. Mm -hmm. That showed that if that if they took a medicine called metformin, which is the most common uh, medicine taken for diabetes, mm -hmm. a pill. All right. uh, uh, taking um, a met, uh, metformin compared to exercise and diet. Oh, I see. All right. It mm -hmm. was a five-year study. After two years, they stopped the study mm -hmm. because the diet and, diet and exercise arm mm -hmm. was far superior in terms of improving, uh, preventing diabetes mm -hmm. than the medicine itself. Oh, I see. So that's I see. when that was a randomized uh, trial, the highest level mm -hmm. of evidence to demonstrate that if you uh, exercise and diet, you can prevent mm -hmm. diabetes. In other words, to rely upon a future possibility of having a medicine created to take care of a problem, to uh, permanently take care of the problem, to uh, you revoke the problem. Mm -hmm. Rather, you would do, you will rely upon the fact that it can be prevented from going worse. Absolutely. Right, to worse. Yes. Right? Uh -huh. By control your blood sugar. Yes. And by keeping a diet, diet and exercise, right? And it's really exercise. It's what we really eat. All right. That's okay. the that's the key is a is a balance. And and if you but think about is all the, the definition is that it, it is irre irrevocable. Can it be reversed? Yeah, absolutely. 
Type 1 cannot because the beta cells mm. aren't producing insulin. Okay. Type Mo 2. You say mo most people are not type 1, right? T only 10% of the 26 million okay, people okay. plus luckily, are luckily, type luckily, 1. Luckily, luckily, All right. Yeah. All right. The bulk of the diabetes is all chronic disease is type 2. Mm. So those things are preventable with diet and exercise. And so that's the big push with the Affordable Health Care Act oh, I see. with Obama. Mm -hmm. Cost and quality. I see. So it costs us more to take care of a diabetic patient. Mm -hmm. Because they've been a bad behavior, they didn't exercise and diet, they were overweight. I see, I see. And I those see. are the patients that that uh, end up with complications that cost us a lot of money in the hospital. You rather start but, from the bottom up. Right? There you go. Mm -hmm. And you can prevent most of those problems if you do well. And it's all related to eating and, and, and exercising. I see, I yeah. see. And, and the key is moderation. And there is also a concern about uh, age, age-wise. Mm -hmm. It goes to, tends to, to uh, tends to go down on age. Instead of a people going 60 or, or 50 or 80 starting to have the diabetic problem though, nowadays you're talking about young people in the 30, 35 age period or right. even younger than that starting to suffer that. What causes that phenomenon? Well, that's because of the, the obesity. So the that obesity? was an epidemic mm -hmm. uh, for type 2 in, in child and adolescence and, and uh, in the 20s. Mm -hmm. And so that has really changed from, from uh, when I was in San Antonio at the county hospital mm -hmm. uh, uh, over the, say, the last, say, 10 years I was there, that population mm -hmm. changed. So mm -hmm. uh, we would run about 10 or 12 patients in the hospital all the time mm -hmm. with some type of diabetic foot infection uh, related to uh, the neuropathy, the loss mm -hmm. of, uh, of sensation. But I would say that changed where the average patient was somewhere between uh, 38 and 48. All right. Versus okay, all right. between 55, 65 or older. Is it because of the modern nutrition systems? Yeah, it, it's the westernized diet. It's fast food. Fast food. And the yeah. preservatives that's inside the food, it's not healthy. So mm -hmm. you need to be eating organic and fresh food all the time. Mm -hmm. And if you think about America came from an agronomy economy. I'm, I grew up on a farm where mm. everything I ate was fresh. I see. So we grew everything. We would pick all different peas, beans, mm. corn, mm. whatever we ate. You had the, the, the meat there also. Natural. You could, the, natural, there you go. Natural, it all came yeah, from yeah. natural. It wasn't pesticides uh -huh. or anything like that and nothing mm. we ate. Mm. So my grandparents all lived to be in their 80s and 90s, late mm. 80s and 90s. My grandmother had diabetes 50 years. Mm. I used to give her insulin shots when I was a little boy on the all farm. Right, uh, but, uh -huh. but she ate healthy, she had a huge, she had a farm. She sent uh -huh. her kids to college farming. Does it have anything to do, I mean, the disease phenomenon going younger uh, with the, uh, with the, what they call the uh, modified, modified uh, fruit or food or vegetables? Well, no, I don't, I don't think that. I just don't think that we're eating because everybody's busy. They don't cook. Mm -hmm. So they go to McDonald's and Burger King yeah. and buy all pizza and get all the fast food, all the fatty mm -hmm. stuff. And that's the problem. And if you look at China, India, and the more westernized the countries mm -hmm. become, the, up, the, the prevalence of diabetes continues to increase. Now there's a genetic predisposition to that mm -hmm. in terms of familial history. So the prevalence of diabetes in the Middle East is about 30, 35 percent. Mm -hmm. It's really high. Mm -hmm. And it's really significant in China and India because of the westernization and the diet. So you're saying that the American problem, uh, going, uh, age going younger uh, to start with a diabetic problem, is not caused by the modified uh, generic food or vegetables or meat. No, I don't, I don't think, I mean, that could have a problem with that, but it's the fact that we're not eating healthy. I see. So I see. we're not eating fruits and vegetables and all of that. You're eating starch mm -hmm. and rice and to, you know all the different diets that we have, and it's, it can has right. a lot to do with culture. Okay. So I can tell you that uh, we uh, at the Texas Diabetes Institute, when I was there, we mm -hmm. had a kitchen, and we had diabetes education classes. Mm -hmm. And so once you got diabetes, it was required that you had to come and take the classes. So they would teach the ladies uh -huh. how to cook, but how to cook healthy. How to cook? How to cook healthy? And my yes. classic mm -hmm. example, Jack, mm -hmm. of that is that we had a lady that wore a 24 dress. Mm. Well, we had a program through the, through the uh, Department of State Health Services in Texas, mm. the Di Texas Diabetes Council, and the community health system in the, uh, the, the city health department, mm -hmm. and it was a church. So it was a, 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 a multidisciplinary type of approach. Mm -hmm. And so th they had a nurse that was working there, so they met this lady. So she finally talked to the lady about cooking and, and educated her. So she started cooking differently. And so over about a year, year and a half, she went from a size 24 to a size 12. 
And oh. she came to the Diabetes Council oh. and gave us a lecture I about see. how she changed the whole landscape of her family oh, because God. she was the oh, one that God. controlled that because she was the one that cooked. Now, Another you still word. wanted some beans and sure, tartillas sure, sure, and some sure. of the cultural oh. things you would cook in a traditional oh, Mexican-American, a okay, Hispanic okay. diet. Oh. However, that you can still cook a little bit more healthy. You can put a few more tomatoes and a little bit more lettuce and, you know, a few more vegetables that, to Another mix word, with those not, things. Uh, not 100 percent what you eat. It is the part of uh, how you eat, right? That, that's exactly right. right. It's, it's that and, and doing it in uh, moderation sure, sure. and exercising because if you start to gain weight, that tells you that you need to be exercising sure. and you need to right, look at your okay. diet in terms of why. Okay, let's take a short moment out. The more we talk about it, the more we learn, we believe that we start to see something that uh, uh, sounds possible to me, try to at least control my <laughs> All right, so stay with us. Hello, dear folks. Welcome back to the discussion about uh, diabetes. <laughs> All right. uh, inch by inch, we're getting to the point of uh, diabetic uh, situation, diabetic issues. Uh, we know this country, uh, well, it used to be a neglected or ignored issue, but right now becoming the third killer of the, uh, of the, among the population. Uh, I said that's serious, right? Yes. To get to the answer of many questions, we have our good friend, Dr. Harkless, to come join us to share his uh, expertise in this whole area, mostly about prevention. He, he mentioned about the fact that it is what we eat, but it is not 100% what we eat. It is also, but also it is how we eat what we eat, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, I have one simple question. Uh, let's see, the, the, for example, uh, uh, marijuana, for example, bad to people, bad to the health. So some of the states, well, most of the states ban, ban it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, not only the trash food, the fast food does no good to human health, why do we still see them everywhere? Well, I think there's been a lot of uh, significant <laughs> change in that area. Some. It took me a while it, to it, figure out the question. It took you a while to figure out the answer. Well, well I would say that uh, Bloomberg, mm -hmm. who was the mayor of uh, New York for yeah. some, several terms. He been on the, uh, the uh, what, the, the 64 ounces of the jars of well, what? No, he, uh, he put some ban on some uh, different aspects of uh, food uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, in New York mm -hmm. uh, as related to that. And, and, and also that restaurants had to tell you how many calories was in the different food preparations. Mm -hmm. So, if, for example, if you go in McDonald's or whatever, it'll tell you exactly if you're eating a breakfast burrito, uh, Big see. Mac, or just uh -huh. a regular hamburger uh -huh. cheeseburger, uh -huh. it'll tell you exactly how many calories it is. See? Mm -hmm. And so that gives you some idea about what you're eating. Mm -hmm. And if you're not burning off calories, then that's when you, your blood sugar goes up. And so the that, that, so that that's the problem is that our schools, uh -huh. those fast food, those trash food, are mostly served in schools. Right. That's right. changing also. Uh, mm -hmm. When I was in Texas, we were able to get the um, the sodas out of the schools mm -hmm. and to get PE back in the schools. When I, I chaired the Diabetes Council in Texas, and uh, we had to go to the to the legislature, mm -hmm. you know, to work on that because the schools had taken PE out, physical activity. What is that? What is that? PEI. Uh, PE. PE. Oh, PE class. Yeah, yeah PE, PE class, which PE is physical class, activity, yeah. where they go and do stuff during the day. Mm -hmm. Well, that they had taken that out, and they were doing some class where they were studying instead mm -hmm. of having physical activity. And so they, so everything that you would do to get a balanced diet plus activity, they had gotten mm -hmm. rid of. And so we had a big push through the Diabetes Council to, to get that back in. My point is that would be... But, yeah. but what has happened is uh, they are putting more healthier foods back mm -hmm. into that, to the schools where mm -hmm. you have lunch counter, and now, instead of going to the fast food thing, now they have a more of a balanced aspect mm -hmm. where they have salads and different stuff that are more healthier. Well, and the U.S. Department of Agriculture what, is working uh -huh. with the schools and with the 
state health departments along with the school boards and the school systems to do a better job in nutrition. And that was one way how they were trying to curb the childhood obesity in terms of you saying the younger people getting diabetes earlier, the only way mm. you're gonna counteract that mm. is that you have to educate them in health classes mm. about what the great foods are you should be eating because the kids have the most significant exactly, impact exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on what the parents do. Mm -hmm. And so that was a, a very, very successful mm -hmm. program called BM what, Start in yeah. San Antonio, which mm -hmm. a doctor had, mm -hmm. where he went into the elementary schools and started educating the kids in the fourth grade. Mm -hmm. And everybody that was obese, he was able to decrease that and educate. Uh -huh. And he saw where the parents start mm -hmm. eating differently in the homes because the kids knew the impact of what that food mm -hmm. meant. And so now that program is start was, um, uh, supported by the Texas Department of Health mm. as a signature program to go into schools all over the state so that yeah. they could go in. Sure, and, sure. and, and this is more for inner city schools mm. than probably more the rural schools mm. because the more urban it becomes, the less they eat healthy, city, would it that be, aspect. Would it be possible we motivate, mobilize all the uh, doctor's union with the school union all together to lobby the legislature to make laws to ban those fast food, or at yes. least to give a control of those fast foods. I, Would I, that be a possibility? I believe that that basically has happened in most states. The American Diabetes Association mm -hmm. uh, was working uh, with, with the health coalitions mm -hmm. to pass legislation in a lot of states. And I know that that happened in Texas, and I know mm -hmm. that there's been a huge push here in uh, California in that, in that regard, mm -hmm. you know, to, to, to eat healthier and to teach mm -hmm. that in the schools mm -hmm. and get a lot of the sodas out of the schools. What has happened is the Coca-Cola and Coke and Pepsi have changed where they'll put more healthier drinks in those things versus mm -hmm. the, they still have that, but the, the key is to push the more healthier drinks mm -hmm. and more of a health conscious thing than et cetera. So you see a lot of change within the food industry relating to more healthier foods, et cetera. So patients will have those particular aspects on sure. the menu so they yeah. have something to choose from. On Historically, the, they did not. Yeah, on the other hand though, those are really tasty. I love them, hamburgers. Absolutely. I, I do a lot. I eat a lot. So, you know, of course, on one hand, they're so good, and you have to, well, sometimes you, once again, once, once in a while, you have to try it. But, and on the other, well, there's no. But the key is that you can't do that every day, see? Mm -hmm. That's the problem. I see. Moderation. So it's, it's almost like, can mm -hmm. I eat some real sweet pie cake dessert? Mm -hmm. Well, most diabetics won't. There may be a diabetic dessert that may not have as much sugar in it, mm -hmm. but it's still a dessert. Mm -hmm. But there may be a time when you really want the big dessert. That's okay. But you can't eat that dessert every day. That's the moderation mm. piece. See? So if you do eat it, you can check your blood sugar to see what it is, mm -hmm. and then you can raise your insulin or medicines that you're taking to counteract that. Mm -hmm. And so now, because you can check your blood sugar three or four times a day, I have often you need to, if you go out and do something, you can pretty much know where you are. Well, so I think it's, it's the re mm -hmm. it's responsibility from the patient understanding what they have to do and mm -hmm. being educated enough so that they be, uh, become sure, comfortable sure, sure. in managing uh -huh. what the, a chronic mm -hmm. disease. That's what Speaking it is. Speaking of uh, checking blood sugar though, uh, while you're talking about all kinds of people, people who check their blood sugar constantly are definitely diabetic uh, victims, right? Yeah. And then to most of the people, they are going that way, who are going that way, they haven't run to that kind of a serious period yet. So to normal people, before you have to check your blood sugar constantly, what is the sense symptom or what are the symptoms that you have to slow down as a doctor's advice, please? Well, well, the symptoms of uh, you increase uh, thirst, increased, um, uh, we call it polydipsia, polyuria, polyphagia, increased hunger, uh, increased- Increased hunger, uh, 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 increase, increase your, the thirst. And increase urination. Those uh, are increased the, urination. Uh, or you may have a sore uh -huh. or a wound that uh, may not okay, heal. Okay, now, what is the increased urination? About uh, how many times a day is considered you about just, uh, excessive? Normally, you go to the bathroom about every four or five hours, normally. Mm -hmm. Every uh, four or five hours? About every four or five uh -huh. hours. You, 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 you and have you to feel go. hungry every four or five hours? Well, you stay hungry. It seems like you're hungry all the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what about the and you, dry and you, and you're thirsty, so you drink mm. more water. Mm. And so that's 
part of uh, you going to the bathroom more because you're drinking more water than you normally drink. Yeah, of course. The more water you drink, the more visit, right? That's exactly so. right. But you tend to do that more than what you were doing normally, which means that if I drink water, eat breakfast like about 6, 30, 7, and, and drink some juice mm -hmm. and water, uh, probably around about 10, 30, uh, I have to go to the bathroom. And, and the then whole I, thing... And then I go again about 3, 3 in the afternoon or something like that if I go so, like about 10, so, and then I so. go again by the time I get so, home about 7. So once again, it starts with thirst. Right. right. The thirst make you drink a lot of water. Uh -huh. The excessive water take input make you go to the bathroom a lot. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So it goes on. Right. So if it goes in that kind of cycle, absolutely, you better be serious about yourself. Right. Right. But I think that the mm -hmm. since type two is the most common, I think the family history and looking at yourself, there's a thing called uh, ABC. Mm -hmm. uh, what's your ABC? A, a. A is your hemoglobin A1C. Hemoglobin A1C is a test that what can What is A? A1, a is A1C. A1C. A1C is, 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 is a test to tell you whether your blood sugar is normal. Uh-huh. So you should, if you have any, so the question is, am I at risk for developing diabetes? Uh -huh. So there's a risk test that you can take All through right. the ADA. You can go online and, and What is it to B you. and C? B is blood pressure and C is cholesterol. Uh-huh. Those are all, all related in mm -hmm. the whole process. So every like patient... That as they get older, should ask, what's my uh -huh. ABC? Is mm -hmm. my blood sugar normal? Is my blood pressure normal? And is my cholesterol normal? Because those are all kind of interrelated and connected that leads to complications in the artery. Mm -hmm. Right. So blood, uh, if your cholesterol high is high, and this is the blood vessel, uh, you start to develop plaque inside the vessel mm -hmm. so that it narrows. And if it narrows slowly and you're doing that along with smoking, then you get less and less flow. And so that's what happens. And, and, and for example, I had a lady at... Uh, You're talking about a cell? We're talking about the blood vessel. Oh, the blood vessel, yeah. yeah the blood, blood vessel, vessel yeah, yeah, yeah. this is the blood vessel. Mm. This is like uh, Interstate 10. Yeah, it's getting uh, clogged up. Get clogged up. So mm. this is our 10. Mm. And when, when no, tr no wreck is going on, mm. not too many cars on there, it, it's flowing good. But if there's a wreck, mm. that thing shuts down, right? Well, that's kind of <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what happens with the artery. Uh -huh. So, the body has its way of having what we call collateral circulation. You'll take mm -hmm. a detour, mm -hmm. so you'll get off the freeway to go around the wreck. All right. If you already know <laughs> it's there. I see. So that's how the body and God makes us, so that you can do a bypass. Mm -hmm. You bypass the blockage to get there, and so that's mm -hmm. what happens. So now, the technology. The more that, by bypass, the more uh, the the more weight to decrease. No, Does no, that mean no. Make, make you bigger? No, no, it doesn't make you bigger. <laughs> right. No, it's just the body's way of getting blood to where it should go. go. Uh -huh. But the question is, is it enough to heal something? Well, so those are, that's when we say, what, are you at risk <laughs> for developing? So the worst thing is that an overweight, eat a lot, a diabetic smoker. Right. Am I right? Yes, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. All right. Not Let's good. take a moment now. Let's see how we can take care about those overweight smoker who has diabetic problems. Right. right. So, stay with us. We'll be right back. Hello, my dear folks. Welcome back to the show talking about the prevention of diabetes. Uh, yes, it is a huge problem. It is, has becoming the third killer of the this country. The heart attack first, still mm -hmm. first, uh, stroke second, mm -hmm. and uh, di diabetes third, mm -hmm. right? So right. it's a huge problem. I have today invited my good friend, Mr. Uh, Dr. Hartless of Western University. He is a dean of Western University and he also uh, he deals uh, both fields, the academic field and also the clinical field. So he is an expertise in this, uh, uh, expert in this area, trying to apply his expertise to the show to bring information to, to my audiences to see if we can do prevention rather than cure, right? Or yes. Uh, you're talking about a uh, systematic control of your uh, diet, yes. what you eat, mm -hmm. and lots of exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, check your blood level 
I mean, sugar level yeah, hemoglo constantly. Hemoglobin A1C, uh, right. you can do that. And mm -hmm. then try to pay attention to where is pain, where is no pain. Yeah. Like you said, pain, the, the gift nobody wants, Yeah, right? pain is the gift that nobody wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. That's, uh, Paul mm -hmm. Brand said that. We talked about that in, the, I think, uh, the first sure, segment. Sure, sure. But Aristotle also uh -huh. said, uh, we cannot learn without pain. Mm, pain teaches us course. lessons. Yeah, 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 yeah. So mm. the fact that they uh -huh. have lost the gift of pain, mm. they go out and do normal things sure, and they sure, don't sure. know that they're hurting oh, themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Exactly, and that, exactly, and that's, exactly. the, that's the key. Yeah. Is that how do you educate someone uh -huh. that they're hurting themselves mm. and if the pain feedback mechanism we is not there. We talked about the age graphic. How about men, women? I mean the sex graphic. And who tends to get more? The male tends to have more diabetic foot problems than females. Diabetic foot problems. Yeah, mm. uh, there tends to be more in the male than the female. The male does not go to the doctor. Mm. They are busy. They tend to be more macho, yeah. and they don't go. It's hard they, to get the doctor. They ignore them. They also especially, ignore. especially for prevention. Mm. So uh, that was a program, and say it's especially in the African American mm. uh, population or in the in minority populations. The diabetes is worse, and we tend not to get the treatment in terms of what they call health disparities. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's not really getting to those particular populations, mm -hmm. and so that's a huge uh, push in the National Institutes of Health I see. and through HHS dealing with health disparities, meaning that uh -huh. we may have the best treatment. Well, the question is: there's research, there's efficacy, mm -hmm. is it effective? Is it efficient? And is it available? And if it is available, is it being distributed? Mm -hmm. So that's why the, all the changes in the healthcare system is that we do not have a good system. Yeah, that the every, system that prevents. Every, that everybody right? follows. And so mm -hmm. let me give you a quick example, Jack. Mm -hmm. uh, I graduated my first college uh, class of foot doctors in, in May of 13. I see. So I gave them lectures on uh, in the endocrinology section, which is where you teach the medical students, podiatry, mm -hmm. dentistry, and optometry together mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. diabetes. Well, I gave a big lecture about mm -hmm. diabetic foot mm -hmm. and prevention. Well, we created the University of Texas wound system and wrist systems, which is the clinical pathways for treatment. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to see if I gave them a lecture in the big class in endocrine, I also gave them a lecture in the podiatry specific class. I see. Well, I wanted to see were they utilizing it? So I have a quote that says, just because uh -huh. you taught me, mm -hmm. doesn't mean I learned. Mm -hmm. How do I know you know? Uh, uh -huh. okay, 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 so okay. I brought, I had 23 in the, first, in the graduating class. I had mm -hmm. uh, each, a Monday morning, half day, for three mm -hmm. solid weeks, mm -hmm. I had seven, eight students to come and spend a morning with me mm -hmm. to find out did, did they know. And mm -hmm. what I found out was that they, didn't, they weren't utilizing the system of care. Mm -hmm. So there's no wonder that you're getting bad outcomes if you're not utilizing a system that's been designed and validated mm. in, in prospective trials in terms of research to tell yeah, you what's yeah, the best yeah, to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so that's the problem. Mm -hmm. How do you change behavior in terms of those doctors who've been out there for a while mm. to keep up in terms of lifelong learning to be sure yeah, yeah, they're yeah. utilizing the best mm. system that's going to mm. give you the best outcome, see? Another and word, so that's what the affordable health care sure, is about. Sure. Is to look word, at if cost. you fail at the bottom, though, the whole nation is going in that train. Right? Yeah, and but, then, well, you know, well, hopefully there's a cure. There's a there's a one for all cure, but, but that's going to have not going to happen. But what happens now is that they pay for procedures and they pay you mm -hmm. not based on your outcome. So mm -hmm. now they all start paying you based on are you keeping the, the population healthy? Mm -hmm. So they call that population health. That's where this thing is going. Mm -hmm. And right. so if mm -hmm. the patient has to pay for the care. Mm -hmm. And you know, and I'm giving you the best information, and you're not doing mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do. Then I'm not so sure that they're gonna mm -hmm. pay for that. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're not doing what you're supposed to do, All if that right. makes sense, okay. you know. So, so it, right. it's 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 bringing a more accountability and responsibility uh, mm -hmm. to the system in terms of what's the best evidence mm -hmm. for this for whatever the care and treatment sure, is, sure, and are we utilizing sure, it? See. Sure. And, so and so, it looks, and, and so that's a major mm -hmm. piece, just yeah. in this one example that I gave you. Mm -hmm. You know, so if my mother happened to go in the guy, wrong guy's office that had a foot problem, he uh -huh. may not be utilizing the best treatment mm -hmm. modalities to give her the best outcome oh, over time. Right. Very good. It all looks to me that uh, uh, we need to bring people's awareness about a problem. Absolutely. Right? 
And speaking of awareness, though, there is a, a cancer association, right? Mm -hmm. There's a heart association in the United States. Absolutely. Is there a diabetic association in the United yeah. States? Uh, there's the American Diabetes Association, which is mm -hmm. similar to heart and uh -huh. cancer. It's I really see. big, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. I was a, um, I've been a member for, I don't know, 35, 40 years. I see. And I go to the meeting every year. We, the mm. American Diabetes Annual Meeting this year was in San Francisco. And uh -huh. I bet you that was, I don't know, 15, 20,000 people that worldwide that come. Mm. All the most recent uh, research, uh, scientific abstract, post exhibits, everything that's going on with diabetes is at that particular meeting. It's a great, right. a great meeting. And, to and the it, same problem, though, how to take care of it. Of course, doctors have their pers perspective, and uh, researchers have their back perspective. The government has their pr perspective, right? So uh -huh. each individually. So how do you see in the future? Can we in the foresee future, seeable, foreseeable future? Can we human be able to handle this? Diabetic problem? Yeah, the handle means that to get rid of. You take one pill, two pills, it goes. Like that. Well, I just still think it takes it takes population health mm -hmm. and you gotta get down in the community and understand mm -hmm. the cultures of the people uh -huh. mm -hmm. and you have to have a set up appropriate prevention programs mm -hmm. within that culture, you know, where that culture resides. Mm -hmm. And you got to have doctors that look like that culture, that's part of the culture, mm -hmm. because there's more trust that goes on in the mm -hmm. doctor-patient relationships when you have people from that community to practice in that community. Mm -hmm. And so that's the big push, is that we have a shortage of doctors with the Affordable Health Care Act, mm -hmm. and we got to get more doctors in terms of the diverse populations mm -hmm. trained to be doctors to, do, to go in practice. And that includes nurse practitioners and mm -hmm. um, physician assistants, because those will be the, the, the uh, I call it a interprofessional healthcare team mm -hmm. that's going to have to take care of patients. You can't train enough doctors to do all of that. And so the big push through um, the, mm -hmm. um, the AAMC, the American Association of Medical Colleges, which mm -hmm. uh, accredits all the medical schools, the, um, you know, NIH, CDC, mm -hmm. and I, uh, I would call it all the stakeholders, all, all right. the stakeholders uh -huh. in health. Uh, that, that's where uh, this particular process is going in terms in of med words, medical saying, education. Yeah. So the, the big thing is medical education. You train the physician, you train the dentist, and we are training silos. The big push and change right now is interprofessional education, where you'll have the mm -hmm. primary care doctor, you'll have the podiatrist, you'll have the nurse yeah, practitioner, all the, all of you'll them, have the social worker, yeah, yeah. you'll have the diabetes uh, educator, mm -hmm. where you have a team of people. Now, yeah. diabetes has been a mm -hmm. disease that we've learned for many, many years that it take a team of people taking care of the, mm -hmm. taking care of the patient. Not so that's word. one of the diseases uh -huh. where we've learned a lot about interprofessional education. But that needs to be taught from day one. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a proverb 22 and 6 in the Bible says, mm -hmm. train up a child in the way he should go, mm -hmm. and when he's old, he will not depart from it. So <laughs> if you start training them early All in right. medical school uh -huh. about how to work in team-based medicine, I think you're going to see a bigger mm -hmm. change in terms of quality of care preventing the complications before they get there. I see, I see. And that'll mm. decrease the cost because course, if you're taking care of it on the front end, you're yeah. not gonna pay all those expenses yeah, the, because the, you developed the, the complications. They all end of emergency room. Right. Basically the, the healthcare call, system it's lots of money, yeah. Basically the healthcare system historically has mm. paid for 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 us to be sick. Mm. Not for prevention. So that's I a whole see. paradigm mm. shift and that's why all this fighting against the healthcare. There's so much money in healthcare. In other words, you still call on people to work in coalition. Absolutely. Well, among the uh, I mean I call you call the inter interprofessionalism. Yes. Right? Call coalition kind of thing. Rather than relying on one pill or somewhere to the future research find out. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it, that, so that's what it takes now. I'm thinking about: is it possible within the next future, next four or five years or ten years period of time, something came out to take care of problem, like say penicillin, for example, right? Mm -hmm. uh, in old days, when you have a uh, what is it called bronchitis? No, 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 no. What is it called? B B B B B B. The lung. What is that? Uh, uh, Bron uh, chronic pulmonary disease? Yeah, whatever, right? COPD? Yeah, uh, uh, well, it uh, wasn't until penicillin came out, oh, you yeah, well, didn't well, get total cure. I understand, I right? understand, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Well, you're probably talking right. about like polio. 
like a polio, polio thing, you got, uh, a va- you got thing, the side right? vaccine. The vaccine. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. that. Could that be someday, somewhere, somehow in the future when we rely on, when we can get some, some medication to get the problem, to get rid of the problem? Well, I would hope that, I mean, that's some promise in the stem cell transplant stuff you're talking about. If, mm-hmm. the ba- if you can transplant the stem cells to, to create new beta cells that mm-hmm. can produce insulin. Now, that's a, that's a, that would be a huge breakthrough. Mm-hmm. Uh, in that uh, in that process, but type two is really a diet and exercise issue. Mm-hmm. So that's where education from cradle to grave is important. That you educate the student mm-hmm. kid early enough, and you uh, implement the appropriate strategies within the schools and in terms of lifelong learning about what that process is and how mm-hmm. that shortens their life. Mm-hmm. And if we can do that and make them responsible, and if mm-hmm. parents make mm-hmm. the kids responsible related to that and understanding disease, then that's mm-hmm. fine. Uh, or the longevity or expectancy, stuff like that. Another day we'll talk about that. So to my audience, it's a thank you very much for watching this show. And to Dr. Hargreaves, thank you very much for taking time. Thank your you. Efforts. My pleasure, Jack. It's always a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Mm-hmm.